Okay, so in this video we're going to be talking about different types of astronomical distance units. Um, because space is so big, um, we typically use units besides meters. Um, so just to give you a brief overview, obviously you can still uh, use meters, although it's very common um, to use kilometers instead as a unit for distance. Um, other units that we're going to see are you have the AU, which is the astronomical unit. We'll talk about that in a minute. Actually, that should be capital U. And you also have the light year. Okay, so light year is another unit of distance that's typically abbreviated LY. And you have the parsec, okay, which is typically abbreviated by PC. You can also see things like kiloparsecs and megaparsecs. So typically we have these four units, or four and a half units if you want, um, and they're all units of distance, and they're all used in different contexts, and they all have their own uh, way they're defined and whatnot. So it's very important that when you're doing a problem, you pay attention to the units, because some equations are meant to be solved in one unit, and other equations are meant to be solved in a different unit. Okay, so... We're just going to really quickly talk about each of these in turn. Obviously, you already know what a meter is. Uh, that is the SI unit for distance. So let's talk a little bit about these other ones. Okay, so first of all, we have the astronomical uh, unit. Um, so the astronomical unit um, is kind of a, a unit specialized for our solar system. Um, it is defined as the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. Um, and again, because it's the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, it's really the most relevant in our universe, uh, sorry, in our solar system. Um, so based off of the, def the definition of the astronomical unit, the Earth is by definition 1 AU from the Sun. Now 1 AU comes out to be about uh, 150 million kilometers, or about 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. Of course that's just an average distance because the orbit of Earth around the Sun is actually an ellipse, and so technically that distance is changing all the time. Uh, but again, this is just the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. And so based off of that, um, AUs are typically used within our solar system to kind of give you an idea of the, the distance from the Sun that the other planets are. For example, if you look at this chart on this PowerPoint slide, you'll see that Jupiter is a distance from the Sun that is about 5.2 AU. Now, what does that mean, 5.2 AU? That means that the distance between the Sun and Jupiter is about 5.2 times um, the distance from the Sun to the Earth. Okay? In other words, Jupiter is 5.2 times farther from the Sun than we are on the Earth. Um, if you look uh, at Saturn, that's 9.52 AU. Pluto is at 39.4 AU. So in other words, Pluto is about 40 times farther away from the Sun than the Earth is. Okay, and so um, we'll see this has other uses later on, but this is very typically used um, within our solar system. Um, and this chart kind of gives you uh, the distance from uh, the Sun that the other planets are in terms of astronomical units. Okay. Again, just to give you an idea, you can see obviously Mercury and Venus are less than 1 AU because they're closer to the Sun than the Earth is. Mars is about one and a half times farther from the Sun than the Earth. Um, notice there is a pretty big gap between um, how far Mars is and how far Jupiter is compared to the Earth. Okay, moving on from the astronomical unit, we have the light year. Um, the light year is defined as the time, sorry, as the distance traveled by light in a vacuum, I should say, the distance traveled by light in one year. And so we know uh, from experience that the speed of light in a vacuum is about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So if you take one year and you convert that to seconds, as we see done on this slide, one year in seconds is about 3.16 times 10 to the 7 seconds. Okay, and so taking the definition of the light year, you can easily figure out what distance that is in terms of meters. Okay, uh, distance is speed times time. So if you take that 3.8, uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and multiply by the number of seconds in one year, that tells you how many meters is in one light year. Okay, and so we find that one light year is approximately 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. 
Now again, that's a very big number. Uh, typically, you don't see a lot of years within our solar system. Um, typically, uh, you see a lot of years when you're talking about distances from, you know, between galaxies or from our sun to a different star, because that's quite a big different uh, distance. Just to give you an idea, we talked about the astronomical unit before. Um, in terms of light years, uh, the distance from the Earth to the Sun would be really, really small. In fact, uh, the Earth is about eight light minutes away from the Sun. Okay, which is much smaller than a light year. Okay, so we have the astronomical unit, we have the um, we have the light year, and we also have the parsec. Now, here is one way to define the parsec. One parsec is the distance to an object where where in the parallax angle is one arc second. And so, as you're looking at that, you probably have some questions. Um, and we'll come back to, to that in just a second. Okay, but just to continue going through the slide, this is maybe a better definition of parsec. Okay, the parsec, remember the abbreviation for parsec is PC, is the distance at which one AU, so one ast astronomical unit, subtends an angle of one arc second. Okay, so Again, you probably have a lot of questions. Obviously, we know what an AU is. You might not know what this word subtend means. Subtends just kind of means travels through. Okay, it is the angle that's traveled through or measured um, in a situation. Now, what does this mean, arc second? And what is this whole parallax arc second thing? Well, we'll talk about parallax in a second. Arc second is a unit of angle. And we'll talk more about how that's defined momentarily, but arc second is basically a, a unit of angle that's much smaller than the degree. So let's get to some definitions. Um, one way to find out how far a star is from the Earth is to use a method called stellar parallax. Now basically the way this works, and we'll, we'll explain why it works uh, here in a few minutes, is you measure, uh, you make measurements of a star at six month intervals and then you can use uh, some geometry to figure out the distance to the star. Um, the distance to the star can be determined using the equation d equals 1 over p. d in this equation represents the distance to the star in parsecs and p represents the parallax angle in arc seconds. So I still haven't told you what a parsec is, I still haven't told you what parallax is, and I still haven't told you what an arc second is. Okay, so let's get into parallax first, and then we'll come back to the whole arc second thing and explain how this method of stellar parallax works. So the idea of parallax is basically the idea that when you ob observe something from two different um, locations in space, uh, there's an apparent shift in the position of the object. Now, if you read through what it says on this slide, it says parallax is the change of angular position of two observations of a single object relative to each other as seen by an observer caused by the motion of the observer. Now, that's kind of really complicated. So here is an example. If you, let's say, look at your wall, look at a point on your wall, like a picture frame or a book on a bookshelf or something like that, and look at it with one eye closed, and then you switch your eyes so that the other eye is closed, you'll see that the object appears to shift slightly at when you close one eye versus the other eye. Okay, you can also see this if you put your thumb out in front of your face and look at it with one eye closed and then the other eye closed. You can see the background behind your thumb appears to shift. Okay, and so this is what's called parallax. It is the apparent shift of an object against the background that is caused by a change in the observer's position. Now, obviously, it doesn't have to be over a period of six months. Um, it is over a period of six months in the context of stellar parallax, but just with the thumb example, you can easily see how the background behind your thumb seems to shift when you look at it with one eye open versus your other eye. So that is the idea of parallax. And so the idea of using uh, parallax to um, measure the distance to the star looks something like this. So let's say we're here on Earth in the middle of January, and we want to know the distance uh, to a nearby star. Okay, so what we do is in January, we look at the star over here, and we look at the background behind that star, 
And then six months later, when we're on the other side of our orbit, because think, in, in 12 months you go, the Earth goes around the Sun, one complete revolution. So in six months, the Earth is on the other side of its orbit. Six months later, let's say in July, we look at the same star again, we look at the background stars over here, and based off of the shift, the relative shift, because of parallax, we can figure out how far away the star is. Okay, now the way we do that is with some geometry. And so the idea here is that we basically have a triangle. Um, let me draw this on here. So we would like to know the distance uh, to the star. Okay, so that is basically here, this line right here. We know this side right here is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun, which by definition is 1 AU, 1 astronomical unit. Remember, that's how that's defined. And what we're measuring when we measure when we make these measurements six months apart is we're basically measuring this angle here, okay, or this angle, how they have drawn up here, and that is what's called the parallax angle. Now, this angle is very, very, very small just because the distances are very far away. But based off of that, we can use some geometry, as you can see um, over here. And basically what we can say is that the tangent of the angle P, again, P is a very small angle. This is what's called the parallax or the parallax angle. is equal to the opposite side, which in this case is R, or 1 AU, divided by the adjacent side, which is D, which is what we want to find. Okay, and if we rearrange this equation, we get D equals 1 AU over 10 P. Now, there is a property in mathematics where you say, if the angle, so in this case if P is very, very small, let's say much, much smaller than 1, then the tangent of P is approximately equal to P itself. And if we make that substitution in our equation, we get D equals 1 AU divided by P where now d is the distance measured in what's called parsecs. Okay, so again, p is going to be an angle, and this is going to be measured in the unit of angle, not degrees, but arc seconds. So we'll talk about what arc seconds are in a couple minutes. Um, but in this equation, p is measured in arc seconds, and d is measured in parsecs. Okay, so that is a unit of distance. It's about three, uh, a little over three light years. We'll see that in a second. So pause the video there if you need to take a look at that. Okay, I'm going to erase this. And we're going to go to the next slide. And this slide basically um, explains the calculation that we just did. Um, this, by the way, is called the small angle approximation. Small angle approximation. Now you can only use that if the angle is very, very small. Luckily for us, all of the angles in um, stellar problems are going to be very tiny just because the distances are so great. Okay, and if you go through um, and you plug in values, for example, this value right here is 1 AU in meters. This down here, we'll talk about that in a second, where that comes from. But basically, you can show that one parsec is equal to 3.986 times 10 to the 16 meters. Okay, so on the next slide, this is basically just, um, again, a diagram showing how you make the measurements two months or uh, six months apart, half a year apart, and by measuring the background stars relative to the star that we are interested in, we can measure the, what's called the parallax angle. Okay, this angle right here. Okay, and then this is showing where the equation comes from. 
Now, this equation is given again in terms of parsecs as long as p is measured in arc seconds. So, next question is, what the heck is an arc second? Um, so basically, the arc second is a way of measuring angle that's very, very small. And so just to give you an idea, you can imagine that one degree, you could, if you want, call it one arc hour. Now, people don't call it that, but you could do that. So in one degree, you have 60 arc minutes. Okay, so that means in one degree, you have 3,600 arc seconds. So basically, one arc second, which we write with the uh, two apostrophes like this, is equal to one thirty-six hundredth of a degree. Okay, so again, the arc second is a unit to measure angle, uh, specifically angles that are very, 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 very tiny. And the reason we want to do that is because the distances are so great in the context of stellar parallax um, that they're much smaller than a degree, they're very minute, and so that's why we have this really small way of measuring angle. Okay, we have arc minutes and we have arc seconds, and the equation only works as long as p, the parallax angle, is measured in arc seconds. So I'm going to erase that. This slide is basically telling you um, what an arc second is. The only other thing I want to add is these last two bullet points. It says because it becomes very difficult to measure such small angles, stellar parallax can generally only be used for parallax angles of greater than 0 0.01 arc seconds. Okay, in other words, because um, these values are so tiny, there is a physical limitation uh, to using stellar parallax based off of what we can see. We have to be able to perceive that that shift in the background stars, right? And so the limitation um, is about 0 0.01 arc seconds, which means that stellar parallax only works for stars up to about 100 parsecs. Okay, now there's ways you can get around this. This value is typically as seen from Earth. And one way you can get around that is you can use satellites, satellites in space. And the reason you want to use satellites, okay, the reason you want to use satellites is because satellites uh, don't have to see through the atmosphere, um, and they also have much more advanced uh, imaging equipment on there. And so, by using satellites, you can increase the um, the distance that stellar parallax works typically up to maybe 300 to 1,000 par, uh, parsecs at the most. Okay, so even satellites in space are somewhat limited in um, their ability to use stellar parallax, uh, but that's still better than what we can see from the Earth. Okay, so going to the next slide, um, this kind of talks about uh, what we were just going over. Um, you also need to know the relative distances between stars within a galaxy and between galaxies in terms of order of magnitude. Uh, now the average distance between stars in a galaxy is on the order of one parsec. Okay, just to give you an idea, the star closest to us is probably about one parsec. Okay, that's a little over three light years. The average distance between galaxies can range from the you know hundreds of kiloparsecs to a few megaparsecs. And then if you go throughout the slide, um, I think this information is just kind of repeated. So just to do a few uh, basic calculations, um, example one, it says Proxima Centauri has a parallax of 0.771 arc seconds. Determine the distance to Proxima Centauri in parsecs, light years, and meters. Okay, so we're going to do this calculation. Now the fact that we're given the parallax Okay, remember, parallax is an angle. This is P. Uh, leads me to believe that we want to use this equation. But remember, this equation only gives us distance in parsecs. So for the other ones, the light year and the meter one, we're going to have to do a unit conversion. So D equals 0 0.7, or 1 over 0 0.771 uh, 
arc seconds, and if you type that into your calculator, you get about 1.3 parsecs. And then from there on, you need to do a unit conversion. Okay, so we are going to convert 1.3 parsecs to light years. Now there is a conversion for this, and it is given the data booklet. Okay, parsecs to light years. Um, the conversion for light years to meters is also given. So here's a conversion factor. One parsec is about 3.26 light years. In fact, let me write that up here. One parsec is 3.26 light years. That's just, just a unit conversion that would be given to you. Okay, and so if we multiply these things, 1.3 times 3.26, we get this distance is 4.24 light years. Okay, so that's another answer. And then if we wanted to, we can convert from light years to meters. Okay, again, light years to meters is a conversion that would be given to you. Okay, so let's do light years to meters. One light year is about 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. And again, typing that into the calculator, 9.46 times 10 to the 15 times 4.24, we get 4.01 times 10 to the 16 meters. Okay, so this is a very, very simple problem using stellar parallax. Okay, so pause it here if you need to. Okay, so just to take a look at one more kind of example here. This is actually based off of a previous IB question. So I want you to pause it here and see if you can answer uh, these two questions, A and B. A says outline how the stellar parallax angle is measured, and B says show that the distance to Vega from Earth is about 25 light years. Okay, so pause it here, and on the next slide we'll see what the mark scheme says so you can check your own work. Okay, so here's what it says in the mark scheme. Okay, for the first question, um, you had to mention the star's position is observed at two times, six months apart, relative to distant stars and that the parallax angle is half the angle of shift. Answers may be given in diagram form, so allow the marking points if clearly drawn. For B, this is just a simple calculation. Again, keeping in mind that the equation they're using, the D equals 1 over P equation, only works if, it, if D is measured in parsecs. Okay, so once they get D in parsecs, here you can see they did a unit conversion to get the distance in light years. Okay, and then this slide just kind of summarizes um, astronomical terms to know. And this slide just has some hints. Um, make sure you can derive the entire parallax equation, including the small angle approximation. Make sure you can describe the entire process of measuring the distance to start with stellar parallax, um, that you understand the limitations of stellar parallax that you know how it's defined, um, how a parsec is defined, and make sure that you can draw a labeled diagram showing how stellar parallax works. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to finish D1 and talk about things like luminosity and apparent brightness.